I receive a lot of questions on my YouTube channel about how I film my Mousetrap Money videos. People are curious what camera gear I use, what's the filming process. I am not trained in filming videos. Pretty much everything self-taught, but my YouTube channel has been really successful. It's just about ready to hit 150 million views. And I thought it'd be helpful to show the viewers the filming process start to finish. It takes a lot of time. I am not a full-time YouTuber. I still work a 40 an hour a week job. I'm a husband and father to three young kids. That takes a lot of time and in the side, I do this YouTube thing. So from start to finish, I'll show you step by step how I make my videos and we have to start with coming up with the idea. So let's do that now. One place I go to find ideas for new mousetrap videos is to go to Amazon. I type in mousetrap, go ahead and search that. Now I like to sort it by newest arrivals, see if there's anything I haven't seen before. Scroll down, I've seen all these. Now here, this looks interesting. I recently posted a video on the quicksand mousetrap and someone's already selling a commercial version. Let's click on that. It's $24.99. There's only three left in stock. It says it's a quicksand mousetrap kit. I think this would make a good YouTube video. It comes complete with all the components, the perlite, the bait, the jar. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this and then we'll go order it. Now that the package has arrived from Amazon containing our quicksand mousetrap, I'm ready to film the unboxing scene and the intro for my Mousetrap Monday video. So this is a behind the scenes look at my filming studio, which is really just a woodshed in my backyard. I painted the wall white, put up some shelves, and mousetraps as an interesting background. Now lighting's a challenge in here. I have some lights from Home Depot that I move around till the lighting looks good. The real challenge out here is the audio. I live in a place that's really difficult to film. I live by a busy road, so cars are constantly going by. You probably hear those in the background. Planes fly by, also there's a lot of wind, and if you don't have the right equipment, it's going to be difficult to get really good audio. So I recently purchased some new equipment and I'm really happy with the results. Here's a shotgun mic. have this just out of the shot frame and it's right close so it picks up the audio and it filters out a lot of that background noise. I also upgraded in a new camera recently and people are commenting on how clear the video is. This is a Canon 80D. It's been a perfect camera for what I need it to do. It's a DSLR. For the past six years, I've been using a Nikon D3200. That's what I'm filming this with. It's worked well, but it's nothing compared to the quality of the new Canons. I have a tripod here, so I'm gonna mount this to the tripod, get it all set up, and then start filming my video. I have my shotgun mic I put on the stand. Turn the microphone on. I always have the high pass filter on, and then turn it down to minus 10 dB. Here's my 25 foot cord, so I'll connect that to the camera. Turn my Canon on, it's on video mode. Everything's in focus, the shot looks good, the lighting looks good. I can still see the microphone in the corner, I'm going to raise that up a little. I'm ready to film my intro, the Nikon's probably picking up background noise from wind and cars going by, the Canon with the shotgun mic won't, that will all be filtered out, so I'm ready to go. Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out a new product that I found on Amazon that's directly related to a video I recently posted called the Quicksand Mousetrap. I just got done filming the intro explaining what's inside the box. Now I'm filming the scene where we open it up. Got to cover up the address. I don't want psychos knowing where I live. Now that I've filmed the box opening, I got to reposition the cameras and talk about what's inside. So here's what you're going to receive in your quicksand mousetrap kit. You have a jar here, it looks like it's about gallon size, you take off the lid. Before filming the scene on how this trap works, I'm not happy with the lighting, it's a little dark. I have a light on top of my camera I can turn on. That really brightens things up, it's going to be clear, it makes a good shot. The instructions are pretty helpful in setting up this trap. It says there's a red line there, that's what you fill the water level to. Take off the lid and fill it with water. Now the last part of this kit is the bait. This mix is pretty interesting. It almost looks like dog food or cat food. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, wheat, corn, pellets. Mice are going to love this stuff. You don't put the bait on until the very end. So let's go set this up and then we'll put the bait, set up the motion cameras, see if we can get some wild mice in the quicksand mousetrap kit. In the scene I'm filming now, I'm showing where I'm setting up this quicksand mousetrap. And believe it or not, even though this is a whole wall of mousetraps, they still come in. They were in the walls and I actually drilled a hole through the corner. It's like the cartoons where the mouse has a little hole it comes in and out of. We're going to set up our trap here, set up the motion cameras, then see what footage we can collect right out of my filming studio. 
For today, the last thing I'm going to do filming wise is setting up the motion cameras. Then we're going to let the trap sit overnight and see what happens. Now this is one of the most common questions I get. People are really curious what motion cameras I use and how I set them up. I recently posted a video on the subject, but in summary, for the past year, I've been using three of these Browning Spec Op motion cameras. I set them at different angles, hoping that they'll capture the footage I need. These have been one of the most frustrating pieces of equipment that I've had to work with. I spent a lot of money on these. I paid over $600 for all three cameras, and they are designed by Browning to fail. What I mean by that is Browning was worried about battery life, so they programmed these cameras to shut off at night after 20 seconds. Almost all the footage that I need to collect happens after that 20 seconds, so it's really common for me to set up these three cameras at different angles. The trap works great when I come in the morning, but the cameras all turned off and didn't record anything. Very frustrating. Recently, I was contacted by another trail camera company named Enkyo. I'm really happy with some of the features of this camera. It's game changing for me. The biggest one is they let you record up to 10 minutes at a time at night. So I haven't had a single failure. I haven't missed any footage since switching to this camera. A downfall to this camera is the video quality is not as good as the Browning's. But I suffer a little bit in the video quality, but I don't lose the footage and I don't waste my time. Some of this footage is really valuable. In some cases, these videos can generate over $1,000 and so I can't be missing footage. So I'm not going to be using the Browning trail cameras tonight. We're going to use the Enkyo. We're going to set it at 10 minutes and see what happens. Now we can turn on the trail camera. It's starting a 15 second countdown. It's nice that it has a screen. That way we can make sure the trap's in the field of view. Hopefully tonight the mice come in here, drop in the trap, and we get the footage that we need. Well, I went to go check the trap in the morning. There's no mice in here and the trap failed, but that's my fault, user error. I used way too much perlite. The mice came in, jumped in there, ate the bait, and came right back out. In a way, that's good, because tonight we'll definitely catch these mice. They're used to jumping into this trap. I just need to change out the water, put some new bait, and way less perlite. That way it will act as quicksand and not as a solid base for them to stand on and jump out. So all I have to do is change out the water, set the trap up, repeat the process, we have a rat using this trap also, it's just taking bait. I think I'm gonna to have to use a different trap to catch them. This is designed for mice, a little small for rats, but tonight should have some good action footage. Oftentimes it takes several nights to get the footage I need for a trap. Either the motion cameras failed with the old cameras or the trap just didn't work. So I need to show more of my failure so people get a full understanding of what happens with the traps, but this is the process. Keep on doing it till you get the footage you need. Time to set up for round two. I put the water lower than that red line. Just gonna do a handful of perlite here, just enough to make that bait float. I'm gonna use sunflower seeds as the only bait. That's gonna act much more like a quicksand mouse trap than jumping on a waterbed and getting out. Let's set up the motion cameras, then come back in the morning and see what happens. So it's the next morning, I'm checking on the trap. There's actually two dead mice in there. Before I went to bed, I came and checked on it and we had one mouse. I noticed the rat was taking a lot of bait so I lowered the water level, seeing if we couldn't get that rat and we got another mouse. So let's go set up the tripod with the cameras. Now that we've tested the trap, I'm just filming the final scene. Then we'll have all the footage we need. We can go through the edit process and upload to YouTube. Now for this video, I'm coming from a shot angle that's straight down. That's to minimize showing the dead mice. YouTube's advertiser friendly guidelines are becoming so strict that I don't want to focus on the dead mice for this video. I'll film it again at a different angle for my other video. I film two videos, one's advertiser friendly, the other I give to a link to a whole different place that's not under the advertiser friendly guidelines. That video is age restricted as well so I can show dead mice and not worry about any kind of censorship. So I'm going to film two scenes, one advertiser friendly, one that shows a little more what happened. That's the new process I'm going through now and it seemed to be working. So I'm gonna film the final wrap up scenes. Then we'll do one of the most important steps, which is to take the trap outside and take some pictures for the thumbnail photos. I have my brown pet mouse here and we're now ready to photograph the image for the thumbnail. This is a really important step. I spend quite a bit of time on it. As viewers scroll through the YouTube menu, the thumbnail is the first thing they see. 
The image should be enticing. It should make them curious. It should make viewers want to click on the video. And having a good thumbnail can be the difference between a video going viral and getting millions of views and not getting that much attention. A lot of creators nowadays will heavily Photoshop their thumbnails, almost like clickbait. I like to rely on photography. Now I found one of the best ways to get a lot of views is to show a trap with a lot of dead mice around it. But unfortunately, YouTube has demonetized and even age-restricted my videos just based on the thumbnail image. So I have to get more creative. The next best thing is to use my pet mice. Now even though this is a kill trap, he's not in any danger, I'm gonna set him up on the trap and then take an image. I'm looking for a really specific shot. First of all, it has to be crystal clear. I wanna see the detail of each hair on the mouse. Secondly, the body position has to be good. It has to look like it's just about ready to jump into the trap. And I also found that people really relate to animals if you can see a sparkle in their eye. So I moved the light around so you can see a sparkle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set Indiana Jones or brown mouse here on the trap, set my camera on rapid fire. I'm gonna take a lot of photos, looking for that perfect shot since the mice move around so much. And then we'll hopefully get one good thumbnail. I ended up taking several hundred photos for this thumbnail photo shoot and this is the image I like the best. Each individual hair on the mouse is clear and in focus. We got that sparkle in the eye, that gives the mouse more life. People connect to the image more and they're more likely to click on the video. The lighting's good, I like the dark borders and the light in the center. And the position of mouse, it looks like it's thinking about jumping into the trap. So that's enticing, I think people will want to click on the video. Now let's go upload this image to Canva and make our thumbnail. This is the website I use to make all my thumbnails for my YouTube videos, canva.com. It's a free service. You set up an account. This is the home page. Then you click on use custom dimensions. Now the dimensions you use for thumbnails for YouTube videos are 1920 by 1080. That's the high definition. Then you hit design. To get your own images, you go to uploads. Here's images I already uploaded. You want to do your own image. Click on that. In my file that says thumbnail photos, we have our image. Choose that one. And it's uploading right there. That takes a few minutes. Our image is done uploading. You double click it. There it is. Now I'm going to stretch it out to fill the whole frame. That's a good position for a thumbnail. Now all I need to do is add a title. And I like a really short title, just a few words. So you click on the text. So I'm just going to type in quicksand mousetrap kit. I might play around with this a little more, but basically that's how I do it. You hit download. Now for YouTube thumbnails, YouTube doesn't want to upload it on my computer unless it's a JPEG. So I'll hit JPEG, download, now it's ready to go. Now that we have our thumbnail complete, one of the final steps is the editing process. And this can take quite a bit of time. Now this isn't a tutorial on how to edit a YouTube video because I don't use the best editing software. I want to switch to Premiere, I haven't learned that system yet. Right now, I'm still doing an old version of iMovie, and it's worked for the last seven years for me, so it's what I stick with. Now, I've uploaded all the raw footage, pieced it together, and we're ready to finalize it, and then share it to YouTube. Now, a day later, I uploaded the video on the Quicksand Mousetrap Kit, and it's done pretty well. In about 24 hours, it has 187,000 views, over 4,700 likes, 387 dislikes. That's pretty typical when I selectively edit a video and don't show the trap in action. But overall, it seems to be working really well. It was quite a bit of work, but when you have several videos that get that many views in a short amount of time, it really adds up. Thank you so much for all of you who watch my videos and support my channel. If you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comment section below and I'll answer them in a future video.